Our guest is Karen L. Kirshner. I am so excited to have her here today. We're going to be talking about her journey in art. Welcome to the show. How are you? Oh, thank you, Donna. Very well. Thank you for bringing in these lovely pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, to the left, what is the name of that piece? That is a Red Scene 3, and that won the Award of Excellence um, from Dan Christoffel as juror at uh, the Art League of Long Island. Beautiful. And Karen, what is the name of the center painting? That is Fiesta. And I just um, I showed that in uh, Red Dot Miami with uh, at George Billis Gallery. And, um, and that one is going to be in the Paramount Theater um, late June through to August 1st, because I'm being spotlighted. Congratulations. And oh, is that a you. solo show? Or? It's a solo show. Wow. Yeah. Are you excited? Yes, especially because this woman uh, found me at the Southampton Art Center when I was in a fair. And um, it was like a discovery. And I was very excited about it because uh, she loved that red painting. Yeah, she so tell me about that. the red painting. Yeah, and she saw my other work. And so she said, I'm, you know, would you be interested in being spotlighted? We think of starting something up at the Paramount. And I said, yeah, maybe. And then I checked it out. She kept, she called me and we are contracted now. So Congratulations. Thank and you. what is the name of the third painting? And the third painting, that is Red Scene. And okay. that has been around the country. And that won an award in Mississippi um, in a major uh, juried exhibition. It was uh, center stage. Yeah. Do you have a gallery that you consider like your home gallery? Well, right now I'm at BJ Spoke Gallery, which oh, is a wow. cooperative. Yeah, it's the, the, I only said, oh, wow, because uh, you know of it. Yeah, it's very exclusive. Well, so I don't, you've I don't shown there. No, it really it is. is like, yeah, I've, I've, it's got a good reputation. It does. It has yeah. a fine reputation. Yeah, it's for been art. around for almost half a century. And uh, originally it was in Port Washington and now it's in Huntington. And uh, we're looking for new members. But uh, it's people there are photographers, they're um, painters, they're um, people who do all kinds of art, sculptors. And um, so it's a nice group of people who like, get to be very close after a time. I've been there since like 2016, 2017. Do you remember yeah. the first painting that you sold, the first piece of work? Yes, that... right out of the window at BJ Spoke. Okay, tell yeah. us about that piece and that how was... that made you feel. Oh, that, well, that was in my uh, first solo show. Uh, I was very excited, but it was like I lost a baby. Okay. Because these paintings are like babies. But I was thrilled that somebody loved it so much that she came back twice. First, she came with a baby carriage, I was told, and uh, with a baby in it, <laughs> and, and told uh, someone at the desk that, because we're all volunteers, so it was a volunteer at the desk, that um, she loved that painting. It was called, um, I think it was called Lost in the City. And, um, and she, it reminded her of what she was going through, having been in the city, and now she was on Long Island in Huntington. And um, she, uh, it just really resonated with her. And that's what people need when they're ready to buy something, yes. a value painting, it has to touch them right in their heart. It has to have that impact. Otherwise, you know, they could just say, well, I can spend the money on something else. Mm -hmm. But it, that's something they have to have. So this woman, uh, went away and I was told, you know, this guy Richard Anello, one of the artists, he told me, you know, I don't think she's going to come back. People say they're coming back and they don't come back. So <laughs> she came back the next day with, uh, you know, the, the money in her hands and wanted to pay cash and to buy the painting. So I was asked, Are you, you know, you want to sell it? Are you OK about it? And I said, yes, definitely sell it, give it to her. But I needed to know who she was. So I did find out. That makes sense to me too. Oh, because yeah. I, I come from a long line of artists and mm -hmm. um, there is that connection, that symbiotic right. connection. It is mm -hmm. almost like birthing because right, you're exactly. creating from nothingness right. and you're giving something life. Right, exactly. Right? And there is that, mm -hmm. that's still that connection there, that golden, definitely. almost like iridescent yeah. string. If you will. <laughs> your soul is in every right. painting. My soul goes into the painting. I'm one with the painting, like it's an, an actor. You know, I was always empathic and I always became whatever it was I was, I was involved with, you know, whether it was writing or, or music or uh, art and, it, and, and acting. And at Vassar, I was uh, selected for a role in the freshman class and I kind of chickened out of it. I was kind of shy. So um, so what happened was, um, though, you know, I just become whatever it is. And I become the painting. I'm one with the painting. It's a spiritual experience. And, and people who aren't creative wouldn't know that. Um, what, is your, what is your process? So you start out with a blank canvas. And do you sketch something first? Or do you no. just go right from brush to I canvas? I go right from brush to canvas. OK. Yeah. And do you do like darker colors and then build upon it? Or do you Not, just start in a yeah. corner? Like what? 
How do you paint, Karen? How do you like it to depends. do it? It okay. depends. Like with the red painting, I painted the canvas red. I thought this is going to be a challenge. What am I going to do next? Okay. And I look at it and I think, hmm, what am I going to do? So I may have started with just one shape. You know, uh, sometimes I just start with a square or I start with a circle, mm -hmm. usually a square. And then I just work from there and, and, um, and I take pictures of what I'm doing. It's all like in the moment. Good for you. And I don't use any any props, anything to look at okay. uh, to inspire me. And you take and pictures of the progress. I take the ways? pictures of the progress, and then I I study it. I look at it. I study it in my, with my photos. Sometimes I have to use my iPad to see it bigger, and um, I see what it needs. I okay. see what works. What what does it? What maybe I need to balance the colors. I'm always balancing. Balancing is very important to me, and um, so the colors have to balance. The forms have to balance. Um, and sometimes things are asymmetric. And I have a friend, uh, this woman who's an artist, Joyce Kuba, and she tells me, Karen, it's, it's great because I had something asymmetrical. I said, but it's not, it's, not, it, it's asymmetrical. <laughs> no, that's great. So I just, uh, you know, I, I take what they say to me, people say to me, and, um, but then like, as a, the cliche is with a grain of salt, and I do what I want to do. Nobody can tell me what to do. No teacher's ever been able to teach me or tell me when it comes to art. I always naturally knew what to do. And, because, and I and I find that's true because there are realists that are mm -hmm. able to replicate someone right. else's work, and right. that's one form of art. Right. But it's a different type of artist, as you shared, mm -hmm. where you're not really copying anyone else's style. Right. You're inspired just by your own imagination. Right. And the thing is, though, that we are all influenced by others in the art world and in our environment. So everything that influences me, the news influences me. It, that's where my painting uh, After Irma came from, which was uh, a, a, an excellent piece and uh, got a lot of attention. And um, that one um, was inspired by the, the hurricane. And I didn't know, I was, I was painting. I didn't know what I was gonna be painting. I, the news was really getting to me. And the painting became like a crumbling with bright colors and everything, but a, a crumbling, a destruction, and then a rebirth hmm. and in elements, the, the um, symbols that I had in the painting. And, uh, and the same thing happened with um, the Ukraine war. Um, I was painting for the show that I'm having now, BJ Spoke. It's um, on, it was started on the 27th, it goes through the 20, 22nd of May. And um, I have a painting there called um, Lost in the Rubble. And, and then I have a painting called um, Exodus, and another one um, that in the in the that's the same size, 20 by 24. The other one's very large, um, and uh, and and they're all influenced by what was happening in Ukraine. And one of them, I have like a little skeletal hand coming up. That's in the Lost in the Rubble, and all the rubble. And um, and uh, it's a very loose gestural piece with a lot of dots in it that I was deliberately dropping dots strategically. People think when they see a mess, you know, a messy painting, mm -hmm. a gestural painting, whatever, mm -hmm. that people, you know, they're not putting any thought into it. Oh, but, no. But this yeah. thought that goes into everything, it's not something done, you know, from stream of consciousness. Yes. And um, so uh, that influenced me. I did a painting called Asylum Seekers that was in um, the uh, Taller uh, Burkoa uh, Gallery in, um, in, in Manhattan, it was uh, Upper Manhattan. And um, it was uh, like the first Puerto Rican gallery. And uh, and when I did this painting, I, I just I, I was thinking of the, the people trying to get asylum in, um, in at the border of the United States. And it was troubling me how some children were being taken away from parents and people were, you know, in, in a lot of difficulties. So I I didn't know I had a black canvas. I didn't know what I was going to do. I ended up painting something that was very political. It was showing um, them almost like in a in an assembly line, uh, uh, like a prison, looking like a prison. And these people, I, I have abstract almost, figures. Yeah, it's almost like falling down. Almost like a commentary, if you will. Yeah. So you're an artist that sometimes likes to make a commentary. Not on your purpose. Brush. Yeah, right. not on purpose. Just happens because so now Fiesta, it's filtering through me. Now, what I yeah. when I look at your this uh -huh. particular work right. in the center, what I notice is that um, just like a, a somebody that sketches your line work, you have mm -hmm. a very definitive line. It's interesting. Almost you like say your that. mark. Right? right. Are right. you using like the same type of brush? Are you using like a sable brush that comes to a point? Are you using like a flat brush? Are you using That's a funny. mixture of brushes? Like, how do you like to make yeah. your mark? 
Well, I'm spontaneous. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I have many, I have so many brushes and they all get worn out quickly. And okay. then I have to, especially little brushes, like tiny brushes. Okay. And they don't last very long at all. So I, I really help brush manufacturers. Um, but <laughs> this, this um, I, I think part of it was uh, I went outside with the painting and I was probably throwing paint and uh, strategically determining where I wanted certain colors. And then I was, um, and then I was uh, taking that in and then determining what else it needed, you know, looking at pictures of it and determining what I want to do with it and then let my imagination go with it. I can't really say anything's really deliberate um, in terms of uh, using a tool. Um, there are times that I uh, will use, will use uh, you know, a knife, you know, a palette knife um, to get a line, for example, or, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll um, use a stick. A lot of times when I paint outside, I use sticks. Nice. And, uh, and um, you know, I even have a whole collection now of popsicle sticks from uh, Fruit Pops because I know I'm going to be using them. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I know the mind of an artist. My grandfather's <laughs> studio, too, uh, when he passed, there were coffee cans full of things and all different things. And, you know, yeah. and there was probably something similar, like a popsicle mm -hmm. stick to the, like maybe that was for his grass, you know, like you right. never know, like what had happened. Right. But I thank you for, for bringing art to our community. Oh, thank uh, you. It means a lot to me that you oh. came here today. Oh, thank you. To really, share your work. Thank you. I appreciate that you appreciate art. I do. I sincerely yeah. do it. Just like you yeah. said, there's something in my, like my DNA, yeah. right? right. So, Definitely. Um, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Please, if you are someone that wants to express their soul and you think that painting might be for you, just give it a try. Buy some acrylics because they dry faster than oils. Uh, or if you want to just email me, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to tell you about my art background as well. But we have been visiting with Karen L. Kirshner, and thank you for watching.